Hi, I'm Stephen Foskett from blog.foskets.net, sfoskett on Twitter, and uh, techfieldday.com. And I'm here at the Storage Developer Conference with a few of my closest storage friends talking about uh, what we're seeing here and what we're going to be looking at this week. So let's uh, introduce ourselves first. Scott? Hi, I'm Scott Lowe. I'm Other Scott Lowe on Twitter. And you can find me writing for a number of different outlets, including Tech Republic, virtualizationadmin.com, and Wikibon. And I have an aggregate site of my portfolio, which is at cioscape.com. I'm Robert Novak. I'm uh, Gallifreyan on Twitter, and you can find uh, my writing at rsts11.wordpress.com. I'm Robin Harris, uh, probably better known as Storage Mojo. Uh, Storage Mojo on Twitter, Storage Mojo on Skype. Is there anything Are else? Are you Storage Mojo on Pinterest? No. Oh. No. Um, Instagram? No. No, I'm, I'm not really very. Yeah, I'm not, MySpace? I'm not really MySpace. very... MySpace. Yeah, what's your <laughs> MySpace? <here? laughs> I, well, I do know I'm not on uh, Facebook. Okay. I'm you're, not, on, you're Facebook. not on, Facebook. on Facebook. I am not on Facebook, so don't look for me there. I don't trust you. those guys. I just totally don't trust them. They keep changing their privacy settings all the time. And but yet the Google and the Apple you're good with? Uh, not particularly, but slightly better. Okay. You know, they don't have as many people, so all right. I feel better about those. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's who I am. And who, and who are you? And I am Jeff Darcy. I work on GlusterFS, and it's a, that's a distributed file system for those who don't know. Um, I also blog as Can Platypus, but I'm not going to try and spell out the blog address. C A no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I I got the domain fairly early on and tried to be clever, and it, it really really didn't work. Um, so that's about it. All right. So, you guys have. Uh, you, you've, we're just getting here. It's the first day of Storage Developer Conference. What have you seen so far that's interesting? Anybody want to jump in? Yeah, well, you know, one of the, I'm a virtualization guy. So I, when I look at all this, a lot of this stuff, I kind of look at it with that eye. And two of the sessions that I went to today really were around virtualization. One was uh, Micron showing um, basically a uh, um, uh, device that will basically remove PCI Express to a hardware-based system in the data center to do some I/O virtualization and sort of make that whole process a little easier. Another the, one that's the Vertensis technology yes. that they acquired, and yeah. it's cool to see a, a company acquiring that and doing something with it because it was neat technology. Yeah, because another company acquired a similar company recently that's going to kill it, but. Um, <laughs> The uh, I really like the Ziggo technology. So let's let's hope that they can I do know. something great. I with did that. too, but yes. I don't have high hopes. Yeah. Um, who, who bought them? HP? Oracle. Oh, Oracle. Oh, oh, the hardware company. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah right. that. Okay, yeah. Oracle, the hardware. Company. You um, know, Oracle could do some pretty cool stuff with that. I mean, in I, I'm the last person to stand up here and defend Oracle, but you know, you never know. They might be able to figure stranger out. Things have happened. Stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. It is going to freeze over at some point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even a stopped clock. Okay. So, so, so Micron, <coughs> huh? Micron, yes. But uh, <laughs> the other is, uh, interesting, interesting session I attended was a Hyper-V over SMB3 session where, you know, I really got a feel for what um, might be possible with some of the new stuff that Microsoft is doing, particularly in an SMB space where this stuff could be really easy to deploy. Yeah. So a quick take. Are, is Hyper-V starting to catch up with VMware or is it... Is it reaching a level where it can take a chunk out of the low end of the mm -hmm. That's really VM what's going to happen. Yeah. You're going to okay. see Hyper-V start to eat away at the lower end, I think, of the, of the VMware space. And that's, you're already seeing, um, I, we did a, um, uh, well, Wikibon did a research project, and I wrote a post about that a couple weeks ago. And there's definitely um, uptake on the Hyper-V side of the equation. And with Hyper-V Server 2012, I mean, it's fully free. A lot of people say, oh, it's free like a puppy. No, it's really not. Um, it's actually free like um, like, <laughs> free like, like a I really like on the that. floor every like day. Free like a puppy. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, but uh, it's really free. It includes all the enterprise features. It includes clustering. It includes um, basically live migration, storage live migration, Hyper-V replica. And all those things depend on good storage. Um, and they're total. I totally agree with what Robin just said. They're, Microsoft is doing what, no, what happened in Novell. You got it. And, and and VMware, it's VMware's turn now. I wrote about it. it. I called it substandard deployments. Mm -hmm. Not because it's substandard, but because yeah. the standard licensing level and above has really exceptional stuff. I mean, Enterprise Plus, nobody can compete with Enterprise Plus nope. right now. But if you're buying standard or you're buying essentials, the only thing you're buying it for is to get tapped into the ecosystem. There's no inherent 
excellence there. Right. And you might as if you if you're one of those kind of essentials kind of customers, and you don't want, you know, well Veeam is now on Hyper V, but if you don't want some of those other, you know, I don't know, Zangati, I don't know, pick one. Mm-hmm. Um, Versto. Versto. Versto's on Hyper V. Oh, Versto's on Hyper V. Okay, we they see, started we keep, on. We Hyper-V. keep coming up with op- oppositional. But that know, tells about, you, I think, yeah, why, where Hyper V's yeah, headed. Zerto. There we go. If you don't want Zerto. I think that tells yeah. you a lot about where Hyper V's headed. I mean, you can't come up. It's hard to come up with a company that is not now supporting and starting to support or Hyper-V heading that way or heading yeah. that direction. And one thing from my perspective that Hyper V has that VMware doesn't, or that ESX and vSphere don't is the ability for an IT professional to build it out in their lab and keep using it past 60 days or whatever. Yeah. And there's there's supposedly yeah. a movement in place to get the VMTN subscription going again. But right now, two, three hundred bucks a year and you've got all of the Microsoft products to use in your lab, they don't expire. Yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons why I haven't built out a vSphere lab because it's a pain in the neck to mm-hmm. constantly rebuild it. And you don't even have a vSphere lab? I did, but oh, wow. it kept expiring. And I now have v, uh, v Expert licensing, but it still expires after a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like. Well, so does your V Expert. Yeah, true. <laughs> but at the same time, if they would you know, re-est- reestablish something like a TechNet subscription, I'd be all over it. But storage features, storage features of in, in Hyper V are improving. Yeah. They are improving. In fact, one of the things that Microsoft has done is, I would, for, first of all, SMB3, um, but Hyper V doesn't even require shared storage anymore. To do a lot of its functions. Yeah, you can do. That's one of the cool things. You can do live migration to a um, USB from drive. DAS to DAS, from <laughs> yeah USB, anything. VMware can't do that. Yeah, they can with vSphere five one. Ah, uh, but they can't do DAS to DAS. Oh, they can't. There has to be uh, shared storage somewhere. Oh, because okay, I didn't get that impression <laughs> of VVM world. Interesting. Ooh, I wonder why they didn't think. Yeah. yeah. At least that's my understanding. That's, okay. That's what I understand. I don't know. But it's not yeah. like that's all that exciting anyway. I mean, how often are you going to migrate from a SATA drive to a USB drive? Every day. Every day. Okay. I can think of, um, from a disaster recovery perspective, it might not be a bad thing. But again, yeah, there's going to be few mm-hmm. and far between you want to be able to take a virtual machine on a USB drive and not have it be live. So what, are, what were they, so you were excited about the SMB <coughs> for Hyper-V? I was. And the reason it was just, it seemed like it was a relatively clean but still scalable deployment. I mean, basically the way they described it was you have some kind of shared storage, no matter, it doesn't matter what it is. But you front end that with a clustered set of Windows file servers. And then obviously the Windows file servers use an SMB3. And you have a separate cluster of Hyper-V hosts where you have all of the um, virtual machines running, but they're stored on that clustered set of file servers, which is connected to that storage. So the the leg bones connected to the, you know. (laughs) Um, And it seems like it's a a well-tiered architecture that scales really cleanly and really easily. You want to add a file server for more capacity? For more network throughput, just throw it in there and add to the cluster. Oh, um, what a cool idea! Yeah. So they're finally catching up with where we were. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, again, we were talking about a lot of organizations that they're all Microsoft. Um, mm-hmm. They haven't looked at a lot of the open source stuff. They haven't looked at a lot of the Linux type stuff. There's a lot of organizations out there that look to Microsoft as as their solution. So. Yeah, they have their consultants in place. They have their volume license in place. And it's what they they have people who do that. And, and anything that, that's good for the SMB in my book is is good for good for ultimately everybody. But when you say SMB, do you mean small to mid-sized business, or <laughs> do you mean <laughs> server message block? I, I do mean <laughs> small to mid-sized business. Yeah, they, the the name change has uh, caught me a few times. It's like I just got used to calling it SIPs, and now it's SMB again. It's, I think it's mm-hmm. always been SMB, but they were. It was, SIPS was sort of something else, wasn't it? I mean, I is, know that they were the same Is one of them thing. the protocol family, and one of them was a particular yeah. protocol? I was getting that sense. My first session today was uh, SIFS and SMB on Linux. Uh, Robert, do you know the answer to that question? No, but <laughs> it, it would certainly have to be the first time Microsoft ever came up with confusing naming <laughs> and messaging around their naming, right? I mean, <coughs> Metro, I don't know. Exactly. I mean, as near as I can tell, it's just all ex-engineers in Microsoft marketing, and I love engineers, however. You're at Storage Developer Conference. Yeah, so if I want to get out of here Are there live, which forks? Yeah, if I, uh, if I want to get out of here You have at least one live. developer sitting next to yeah, you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and his shirt's already red. Yeah, so yes, an aggressive exactly. one. Uh, if it gets any redder, it means I'm angry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it's just- Or you're just, going on the away You wouldn't like me when you I know, this away this You know, love engineers, my yellow shirt, but like there's a reason you don't want to have a, a lot of former engineers doing your marketing. 
right? Because they tend to, unless you're selling stuff to engineers. You know, the only great. company better at giving things terrible names or not naming them at all yeah. than Microsoft, yeah. VMware. There you go. That's <laughs> yeah. no, right. You know, so Microsoft comes out with a logical volume manager that has no name. VMware can't figure out what VAAI stands for. You know, they can't right. figure out what any of their... And it's so easy to pronounce, too. Yeah. Yeah. Vi. You know, yes. Yeah. Expect to it's see great a technology. Wasn't he a label. rock star? Yeah, yeah. Steve, yeah. Steve, Steve yeah. Vi. You yeah. know, they should call it Steve Vi. VMware, I have a proposal for you. Yeah. Name it after me. How's that? <laughs> Yeah, the Foskett protocol. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It sounds like a movie. The Foskett, yeah. the Foskett socket. That we could have a whole series of Foskett you know. identity. And, yeah. Yeah. Boy, I know that'd be cool. Yeah. The Foskett that ultimatum. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You could just walk around with your Shut iPhone. Up. Pay me I'm or telling. else. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Um, so yeah, so Microsoft's done a ton of stuff to SMB. Yeah. I think that's going to be one of the big. Uh, that was that was the topic of Storage Developer Conference last year. Basically, was Microsoft rolling out feature after feature after feature for SMB 2.2. Yeah, and well they, then they named it SMB 3. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they started investing in storage in a big way about five years ago, and it's really coming to fruition. And I'm, I'm amazed. I expected it was just going to get sliced and diced and turned into salami. And Somebody at Microsoft is doing a good job of shepherding storage features through that big company. Yeah. Because... Yes, it the should. The storage server still sucks, okay, but. No, I'm talking features, yes, yeah. server features, yes. Well, it's not just the features, though. It's also Protocols. engaging with the community better. Mm -hmm. It's like SMB uh, and the relationship with the Samba folks, for example, seems to have gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. there, there seems to be a lot more um, interaction. Um, there's better test suites. Um, there's all sorts of things like that that Microsoft has made available as part of it. Mm -hmm. so and more openness, too. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing a lot more happiness from third-party companies about working with Microsoft on SMB, and that's Yeah, I got that sense this morning from the Linux guys, and uh, yeah, the idea is that they're coming out and talking to people. Yeah, <laughs> and they're, they're almost putting NFS in the corner. Well, NFS v4. I, I don't think know NFS v4 uh, is doing that to itself, but oh, I think that's maybe another discussion. <laughs> well, and they should have taken NFS uh, v4.1 and named it v5. Yeah, because that's two better than three. Yeah. So that way they'd be two full revisions right. above SMB. Or NFS v98, SV2. Yes. Yeah, or they could, or they could NFS just um, me. They could pull a Mozilla <laughs> and just name each individual one I'm of all the versions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and release one every week. Yes. So as a storage developer, you feel you feel like this. You feel like there's a little more openness from Redmond. Yeah, I, I'm actually uh, uh, you know very encouraged by that. Um, you know, I interact with with some of the t Samba team members pretty regularly, mm -hmm. um, and, and it really is looking a lot better. Um, and and I also happen to know from previous lives a couple of people who've gone to Microsoft who were involved in that effort, like Tom Talpy, mm -hmm. um, who I think has just done great work there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's really nice to see that there's um, a, a little bit more of a an even race between the SMB team and the NFS team. Because for a long time in in my part of the world, it was all NFS. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to talk about SMB in, in the Linux world. And now most of the excitement around NFS is honestly coming from the VMware world. Yep. And you know, on the Windows side, I mean, SMB is poised. Yeah. I'm not going to say that it's taken off, but it's poised. And the performance is getting there, which used yeah. to be what my concern in Unix interoperability was, was if you mm -hmm. use a SIF share or SMB share, cut half of your performance off the top. Yeah. What do you think the SMB improvements are doing with, what are the, what's the Samba team doing with these improvements? Um, I think a lot of it is, is, is they're, they're taking the specifications that have come out of Microsoft for these, which are coming thick and fast. I mean, this is you know, very rapidly evolving, and I think to a large extent they're, they're just trying to keep up. But then you have people like Chris Hertel who are, who are working on, on um, the peer disk stuff. I've actually worked with him a little bit on that. Um, so that's actually a fairly interesting technology. Um, there's, when, when you have this many things coming into a standard, there's sort of a bit of this race to pick the features that are really going to define it two, three, four years from now and try and get on top of those. And maybe you don't care so much about some of the other features which are sort of also ran, also have mm -hmm. yeah. kinds of things. Well, that's been one of my big questions about SMB3 is there are so many features in there I remember when they um, when they announced 2.2 .2 last year, I remember thinking, there's no way all these things are going to make the cut. 
they're, they've got to get rid of some of these things or hold them off to 2.3 or, or whatever, but they're all there. Right. And yet third parties are not supporting all those features. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see what SMB3 actually means in mainstream market, not just in terms of Microsoft servers, Microsoft clients. You know, what will NetApp support? What will, you know, EMC and Samba support? You know? Well, you know what you're going to see is, is, is what you already see in the NFSV4 space, where you've got NFSV4, 4.1, 4.2, PNFS, et cetera. And every vendor who has anything to do with these has to put up this grid mm -hmm. that says, oh, well, you know, we this support this feature in this release, and then in this other release we add mm -hmm. this, and blah, blah, blah. And, and they can't just say, we implemented N NFS or SMB version X. They have to say, which pieces? Because nobody's going to have all of them. What do, you, what do you think about that? I mean, uh, do you think they should? Do you think there should be like a line in the sand that says, if you support SMB3, then you have to support these five features? Or do you think it's OK to support just kind of a scattershot set of them? I don't see how it could go any other way. Though, um, once you get into a standards process, um, that's just sort of what happens. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's going to be everything but the kitchen sink. <coughs> and maybe a kitchen sink, too. Or two or three. Yeah, I'm just worried that you know you'll get a kitchen sink from EMC and Microsoft and not from NetApp, and that you'll get the faucet from NetApp but not EMC, and then HP will introduce kit, you know faucets with no sink, and it'll just be <laughs> it'll be anarchy, you know. And then we'll need a meta standard to yeah. define which subsets of which standards you yeah. implement. And happily, SMB has that. One of the <laughs> things that it has is the ability to ask, "What do you support?" You know, as a client, that's one of the things that they've added. <laughs> so. Yeah, now let's see if they actually use it, because yeah. uh, DECnet, I know I'm dating myself here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> DECnet. Actually had a pretty sophisticated system for doing feature negotiation. Mm -hmm. And you know what all the implementations did? It said, oh, are you VMS or not? <laughs> they just totally threw away all of this great features, yeah. feature negotiation that had been put in there. And you know, that's kind of my worry that it'll happen the same with, with SMB, mm -hmm. is that I'll be able to say in precise detail, I support this feature, this feature, that feature. No, I don't support this other one. And you say, are you Windows? I mean, yeah. that's, and a that's, well, that's a That's a big worry, because there have been a lot of those things. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, um, you know there's uh, the DCBX and DCB Ethernet. There's, you know, in HTTP, there's a, uh, you know, what features do you support? capability, you know. Well, there it right. gets even worse, yeah. because now you're talking about Exactly. Everybody just lies and says, I'm Mozilla, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Um, but it's, it's, you have to query capabilities that aren't even in the actual thing you're querying. It's, uh, they're in the infrastructure that it's running on. Yeah. If you're talking about something like DCB, I, I, I now the server vendor has to, g or, or the server implementer, has to go and query everything under them to say, well, yeah. I'm a such and such running on so and, and so. And then each of those things has to query everything, and each of those things has to query everything. Yeah. And before you know it, you, mm -hmm. you've got a real mess on your hands. But that's why they have plug fests and stuff. Yeah. So one of the nice things that has happened is, is um, development of a standardized test suite around some of this stuff. So that when people come to a plug fest like this one, they're already prepared. They already have a canned list of tests they're going to run. And they're going to make sure, wow, these things really do, or Don't. at least transiently, <laughs> do not work together. Yeah. Is that the Connectinator or whatever it is? Well, there's Connectathon in the NFS That's world. Um, I don't think there's anything as established, although a few well, doors down, we have the plug right test here. going on yeah. right yeah. here. Yeah. Well, it, it sounded like they were doing that for yeah. SMB. Absolutely. They're, they really are doing that right here. Yeah, and they, I know they are busy over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little birdie told me that Microsoft's been holding other plug fests as well. Mm -hmm. um, and which, again, is thrilling to see Microsoft working with third parties. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's off, awfully nice. Now, if only Apple would do that. <laughs> Why? It'd be a long drive for them. Yeah. But no, I mean, you know, SNEA had uh, Fiber Channel plug fest for a yeah. decade and yeah. whatever came of that. Pretty I don't much know, Fiber nothing. Channel stuff pretty well works. Well, yeah, but it's not all that interoperable. Oh, don't give me that <laughs> look. Fiber Channel's not terrible. It's okay. Well, as long as you buy it all from one vendor. Or run yeah. it I mean, it, you know, the Or as long as you use a basic, you know. <laughs> the, the plug fests were just a fig leaf for the vendors continuing to uh, uh, really sell something. It was essentially proprietary as soon as you put it into a production environment. Yeah. Works in a plug fest, doesn't work in the data center, you know. and. 
And I think that's kind of potentially the issue that SMB faces if it's really as fragmented as you're saying, and I have no reason to doubt you, Jeff. Uh, that sure you do. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like well, all yeah. the time. Okay. And um, so, He's lying anyways. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, so anyway, I, I, I would be concerned that, you know, I, what I would look for is all the cream in term of, terms of the features to rise to the top, right? And people that sort of two years from now go, yeah, this works and this is important and mm -hmm. well, this sounded good, but it's not important. Because and nobody wants two-year-old cream. Right. <laughs> well, but, but like I know what you're saying. <laughs> yes, let's just ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because some of these features are going to be useful and some of them are not, you know, and we'll see if like SMB encryption really ends up being a, a must have feature or one of those things that some Microsoft customers wanted and nobody else wants to implement. And they're doing per amount encryption as well. Yes, that's over the wire encryption mm -hmm. built in. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually excited to shift gears a little bit about um, the, the InfiniBand stuff here. And to say that I'm excited about InfiniBand makes me sound like it's 1999, but, um, well, 2000. Let's party. Let's yeah. party. Um, you know, SMB Direct, you know, Microsoft showed, you know, gigabytes per second throughput um, recently. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, Mellanox is going to be talking about it. Microsoft's going to be talking about it. My right, big they're question up to is what? Fifty-six gigabits per second hmm? InfiniBand now. Yeah, I forget what they call it. Quad data rate, quad. I don't know. QDR, yeah. S SMB well, over RDMA. QDR is is forty. That's really eight eight B ten B. So it's thirty two. Right. Okay. But FDR is is coming out. FDR. Soon. So Franklin Delano. And then Truman comes next. Um, yeah. Uh, Jim Carrey. Yeah. I approve. And then Eisenhower. So. Okay. But you know, but the point is, I mean, they're getting gigabytes per second right now over InfiniBand, mm -hmm. or over iWarp. With you know, I mean, they, they they can do pretty good over you know, Ethernet as well. And um, my question is just, is that going to succeed? Is that going to be something that's going to take? Well, off? and and Mellanox is also pushing uh, these their uh, SATA switches, and they claim their SATA switches have even lower latency than InfiniBand. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I'm I'm looking for somebody who's actually like implemented. Yeah, something like significant on these SATA switches? There's a lot of InfiniBand implementations. I don't know about any SATA implementations. Yeah, right. Yeah. So a really low latency SATA switch? Uh, like oh, wait, SAS. SAS. Okay. Excuse me, SAS switch. Because I didn't hear about that, but that's <laughs> But anyway, yeah, no, you're right, Jeff, of, of course. Um, <laughs> and uh, I thought it was I, like I bow, an intriguing I, combination. I, I, I bow to your... Uh, you stick enough disk on the other end of the, of the thing and... Right, might almost make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and it, it, I mean, it, it, I mean, it, and I, the thing I liked about it was, after all, Mellanox is the leader in InfiniBand switches, and if they're going to eat their own young with SAS switches, I mean, that's well, the absolute right thing to do. Well, they've been doing the multi-protocol thing. Yeah, for I mean, they've Ethernet too. Yeah, but just remember, I mean, the, the difference really is that SAS is not a convergence protocol. I mean, it's it, that's a storage protocol. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about InfiniBand or Ethernet is that both of those are true convergence protocols. You can run PCI over them, you can run storage over them, you can, you know, you can run block, you can run file storage you over them, you can run data. DMA over them. Yes, I hear that you can even run IP over them, just Whoa. like Fiber Channel. And um, yeah, Fiber Channel was supposed to be a convergence protocol too. But you know, I mean, if you're looking at building you know, next generation data centers, you want a protocol that will allow you to converge uh, you know, all of your I.O. there back to Micron and Vertensis back to Oracle and Sego um, and Mellanox. You know, I mean, that's sort of the direction that things are heading. When, when I was looking at the, the um, Micron device this morning, you know, what, what became clear was there's a, that's a, a simplification play in the data center too. You have fewer wires, you can leverage your hardware exactly. better, and you know, there's there's some nice. And I like that. I like anything that's simple because well, we I'm not that smart. We used to see this in, in HPC and still see it in, in distributed file systems. Um, a lot of people, they've invested all this money in, in some high speed communications infrastructure. They really just don't want to be adding more ports of a different type if there's any possibility at all that they can reuse the ports they just paid well, and that's where the, something like the Micron device would come in. Right. I mean, you're going to add more ports, but you're going to be able to reduce the number of ports you have throughout the data center as a result. Right. And fewer wires is less hassle, in theory. And that's right. the pitch for converge, 
convergence yeah. on Ethernet. And yeah, you remember back in the in the earlier days of InfiniBand, um, like the top spin devices, and there were a few mm -hmm. others that tried to do that kind of convergence. But mm -hmm. I, I guess the technology or the technology uptake wasn't really ready for that yet. Yeah. But maybe we're at the point. I think with with the workloads presented by virtualization, it actually becomes more necessary to do that. And mm -hmm. so there's a little bit more incentive for companies to go out and address that market. So what are you guys looking forward to the rest of the week? Um, you know, there's a lot of different sessions and tracks. Um, NVM. NV, absolutely. I'm, I'm, SCSI I'm Express excited. and NVMe. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I, I don't know if it was at IDF or VMworld. I went to both of them and I can't remember. Yeah, Micron was showing off their <laughs> PCI. But yeah, I guess it was IDF. Uh, so last week, Intel was showing, showing off a, 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 basically a lab experiment that they did with NVM. And they were getting, I forget how many gigabytes per second of bandwidth mm -hmm. to uh, flash and, you know, how many, you know, <coughs> million and a half IOPS and I, I don't know. It was, you know, it was, it was pretty stunning. And the latency was really low. Yeah. Well, have you guys, you guys know what he's talking about? I, I was going to say, at the risk of sounding stupid, okay. what is MVM? I'll, I'll give you the, the, the it's an acronym. five second, the, the, the Never nickel. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Basically, <laughs> PCI Express over um, SAS connectors. Understood. So you get a removable okay. drive that looks like a disk drive, except is actually running PCI Express. Uh, Micron already has a drive like that on the market, and then there's two standards, NVM Express and SCSI Express, to do exactly that. So this thing connects standards. a drive right to the PCI bus rather than going yeah. through a computer. Except that it's hot plug, it sticks out the front of the chassis. Dell already has servers, the G12 servers you can do this with, mm -hmm. and you can have four hot plug PCI Express connected so this it actually right. takes a, a layer out of the system, so it's going to have better performance overall, isn't it? Because there's no SCSI. Right. It's not you know three gigabit. It's not six gigabit or it's twelve whatever gigabit. It's speed it's of the PCI It's ten gigabit or whatever PCI Express. However many PCI Express lanes you have. Wasn't this kind of the same idea that PC card and card bus yep. and so forth had? Yeah, it's it is it's card bus. Okay. You know, except bigger and faster, and more modern, card. and chunkier. Express card without the USB. Yeah. Yes. So, and that's where a lot of things are going. I mean, you know. Um, can you run IP over it? Uh, <laughs> I, I bet you can run IP over anything. You token can. ring? This is support, yeah, token ring. Token ring. I wish you could token ring. Carrier token pigeons. Bus. So, that's going to be pretty cool. So, basically. Carrier pigeons? Tune in on that. <laughs> that's yeah. cool. That is, sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah. So, what else? Anybody else interested in? Um, I'm watching all the Hadoop stuff. It's very nice to see that Hadoop isn't dead. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people tell me that recently. Really? I believe them about as far as I can throw them, but it's Are nice they hipsters? Possibly. Have they moved on from coffee? Provocateurs. I wouldn't know. Yeah. I Gluster. I want to learn them. all about Gluster, too. Yeah, Gluster yeah. and yeah. Ceph. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited to see Ink Tank and Ceph here. I'm really looking forward to that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really regret that I didn't get those t-shirts made in time for this so I could give Sage one. What's that? The ones that say, your distributed file system sucks. I'm going to have a batch made up and give them to all of the distributed file system developers. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm sure somebody can make a case that they all suck, right? They all do. I yeah, mean, yeah, I'll yeah, be yeah. the first to admit it. Um, we've we've yeah. uh, fallen a little bit behind. The rest of the uh, distributed system community has sort of moved on without us. Um, and one of my personal sort of missions is try and bring some of what they've developed and learned back into the distributed file system community where it belonged all along. And you're actually giving a talk on something like this. Uh, yep, you? this afternoon. I'm, I'm going to let it all hang out and talk about uh, uh, everything that's wrong with GlusterFS. I think I'll skip that session. Every, oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Is that the title? Everything that's wrong with GlusterFS? No, FS? it's uh, Futures and Challenges or some, some uh. mumbo jumbo like that. But I've, I've presented so many times on what's great about GlusterFS, I figured I'd change it up a bit this time. Well, this audience, I think, would appreciate the honesty of, <laughs> yeah. Well, I can also make the point that it's not only what's wrong with GlusterFS, it's what's wrong with all the rest. And if mm -hmm. anybody tries to use this as ammunition to say, well, Ours Gluster guy says this is a problem <coughs> with theirs, I will be quite glad to come back at them and say what's wrong with their distributed file system. <coughs> so. yeah. Well, scaling and distributing storage is probably the hardest challenge in storage. Ac actually, it, it, in a strange way. It's not, it's not just the scaling and distributing, but it's actually managing that scaling and distributing. That trying to trying to present that in a nice pretty package with a bow on it, so that your storage admin <coughs> can actually consume that functionality. That's where it gets really difficult. Um, trying to make it non-disruptive, trying to make online upgrades, things like that, 
Um, so that's that that's that's a lot of where the challenges are. Plus, performance, performance, mm -hmm. performance, always an issue. Yeah. Uh, is there is there anything on the agenda for object storage? Oh yeah. Yeah. There you was missed a couple this morning, morning actually. I was in yeah. two CDMI oriented mm -hmm. uh, talks. Mm -hmm. um, there's at least one more that I think we're missing right now. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, we're missing perfect. some of them. There was one this morning from. Right. Uh, Isolon was touching a bit on it, but the, yeah. the one before it. Uh, and I think I there's one tomorrow too. I was, I, yeah, because oh, that's clever. <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I think yeah, there, there, there's a whole bunch of the object storage folks here too. And I think uh, Swift Stack is next, mm -hmm. in the next slot as well. Well, yeah, but object storage is just. Uh, I, I'm amazed at how fast it, that market continues to grow. Mm -hmm. um, more offerings, you know, more more people talking about it, more people using it. Um, yeah, even end user kind of people using it. Right. Well, sometimes I think they're they're using it inappropriately. I mean, you get this with <laughs> uh, um, it's the same thing that you see with relational databases and going to NoSQL. Mm -hmm. Is that there was a need to do that to to sort of break the mold a bit, simplify things radically, and some would argue that the NoSQL folks took it a little bit too far and threw out a few too many features. Well, we're seeing the same thing with these object stores, in my opinion, as a very um, opinionated distributed file system developer, that there were some real problems with scaling uh, distributed file systems. So people said, eh, screw it. Let's, let's simplify the hell out of it. Yeah, no file system. Yeah, we're, we're going to have you know, really simple naming, really simple consistency semantics, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And then people start using this, and they say, well, I really wish I had this file system feature, or that file system feature, or the other one. So let's add it there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'd like to um, see my colleagues in the distributed file system world come back and, and start meeting them in the middle and say, well, you know, some of those POSIX semantics do kind of suck. Some of those should be relaxed. We're going to simplify um, and make things easier to scale. And, and, and you'll see the same thing that you saw with the NoSQL, that You've got one side growing upward in functionality. You've got the other one coming down. They'll meet somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe the, the line between object stores and, and, and file systems will blur, which would be a wonderful thing from my point of view. All right. Well, shall we adjourn for today? Come back tomorrow? See what we figured out? That sounds like a splendid idea, Stephen. All right. Excellent. Well, if you're watching us, we'll be back tomorrow at uh, 1.30 Pacific, not 2 Pacific, 1.30. And uh, see you then, and we'll be posting yeah, this, they too. Time they switched oh. the times. They switched the times. They switched. All right. Bye. <laughs> Ciao. Arrivederci. Anybody know any other languages? <laughs>